Hello my loves. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary and I'm a professional astrologer and intuitive. As you can tell by the title of the video, today we're going to be diving into urgent messages that you need to receive right now from your future self or from your ascended masters that are working with you. There are three piles that I have set up for you to choose from and that I've asked Spirit to summarize the main messages, the most urgent messages that you need to receive right now. And these flowers that we have here for you to choose from, we have a hibiscus, we have the orchid, and we have lavender. All of them are from my garden. So it is such an honor to be able to share not only these messages, but also the fruits <laughs> of our work, our labor that we've been putting in. We, I mean, me and the plants have been working together and the sun and the earth and all the elements and water, all of it has been working together in order to make sure that they are healthy and thriving. And that's the intention that I'm setting for you as well. So like any pick a card reading, all of the links, or I'm sorry, all of the timestamps will be written down below, captured in the comments. And also links for my astrology book, my predictions for the rest of the year for 2021 will also be linked down below, including links to the apothecary shop if those are things that you are drawn to. All right, that being said, I will meet you at your timestamp. See you soon. All right, my love, if you chose the hibiscus, this is your message. Now, the oracle cards that we have here for you, I have not seen them. Um, I do have a set of tarot that are found within this card, or within this pile, but I haven't seen that either, obviously. But I'll be working with the tarot sexual magic. The reason why I'm choosing this well, the reason why I feel called, I think, to work with this is because I feel like spirit, the divine, the higher power, whatever, whatever it is you want to call it, is really wanting to gain access to each of us. I'm really getting that strong energy this morning. And even though the tarot of sexual magic is so physical, like it's very sexual, I see it as more intimate. I see it as... You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be sexual in nature. It's just showing the intimacy of the relationship. And in this case, I'm applying it to, you know, spirit, your relationship with spirit or your relationship with your future self, you know, especially with tonight's topic or today's topic. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you are easily offended, this is not the video for you. Okay, that one to jump out. Wow, wow. Okay, right away, <laughs> right away. Real clear, real clear message here. This is gonna sound wild. With the Hierophant, I heard this so clearly. The Hierophant, I'm hearing the word discernment, but I'm seeing and I'm feeling the, the a message that it's too discerning that you are stringent is the word that's coming through. That um, I'm hearing too detailed, too specific, um, ruthless, and you're creating about, uh, some of you guys think that you're creating boundaries, but in reality, you're creating blockages. Um, spirit with the Hierophant, the Hierophant is not known to be connected to the word pleasure, but that's what's coming through rules the rules wow you guys this message came through like a sledgehammer so your future self or your higher your your ascended masters or spirit right now is telling you that you have created these rules and these boundaries around pleasure around joy around your human experience around what your day-to-day -day life needs to look like it is punishing you also pulled the ace of swords 
The Ace of Swords says, this is the truth. This is the way. This is the will. This is my will. This is my intention. And it's brutal. In fact, if you look at this, she has this guy. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I could do it this way. Maybe not. Let me see if I can. She has this guy tied up. And she, but that's what she knows. It's like she doesn't know, I, I'm, this is just what I'm getting through. That's what's coming through. I'm not judging. I'm not shaming. What I'm getting from this message is this person, this pile, only knows brutality. They only know resistance. They only know punishment. To the fact, to the point where... If they experience any type of pleasure, or if you experience any type of pleasure, any type of love, any type of joy, and it's not coinciding and doesn't come hand in hand with pain, your body, you will not allow your body to register it. You almost feel like life has to be punishing or pain has to be punishing. Or there's rules around it. There's guilt around it. I've just heard the word remorse. And spirit is really, your future self is telling you right now, and I cannot wait to see what your oracle cards have for you. Your future self is telling you right now, prepare for pleasure. Prepare for abundance. Prepare for softness. Prepare for fruit, like fruitfulness, juiciness. I'm hearing the word, I don't know why the word just came through, exploitation. It almost feels as though this group, this pile, if you chose this hibiscus flower, it's so funny that you chose the hibiscus flower because it's known for its juiciness. It's known for its richness, for being tropical, for being free, for, for, being, for indulging in the sun and choosing the sun and following the sun and, and being ripe under the energy of the sun, masculine energy, vibrancy, playfulness, joy, pleasure. But some of you guys have felt and have been in places where when you were loving, when you were free, you were exploited. You were taken advantage of. And now you've almost, I don't want to say surrender, but you've almost collapsed under this idea or under this belief that pleasure is meant to be I don't know why I'm getting pleasure is pain and pain is pleasure. Like this weird twist up. Wow, you guys, look at your devil. You have the devil card at the very base. It's like you won't allow yourself to, I just heard she, she or he won't allow themselves to respect their innocence. What does that mean? That means that you're bonded by this belief of what life, love, work, health looks like. Some of you guys have these rules and these regulations and these restrictions that you have contained yourself to. That you have this belief that this is the only way that I can be successful. This is the only way that I can hit my goal. This is the only way that I can be abundant. This is the only way that love shows up or this is the only safe type of love. It reminds me of someone who has these workout plans I feel like right now I'm pushing spirit right now a little bit. I'm kind of pushing back a little bit. And I feel like you guys are doing that as well, maybe. Um, but it's like someone who has a workout plan and the only way that they feel like they can make their, their goal weight um, for health is by extreme dieting, ex only water, only juicing, only, you know, every day, whatever, 9 a.m., 6 a.m., you know, for an hour and 30 minutes, you just punish yourself with this, with these exercise, whatever, routines. And it's like, you're doing it in the name of health, but you're actively beating up your body. With love, it's, this is a person who, they have these rules, these regulations, these restrictions of relation, for, of love, what it looks like, what the relationship should be like, what they should be doing, what you should be doing. And you beat yourself up and you punish yourself or you punish your partner and you block out all these things and you're hurting yourself and you're hurting the relationship with, when at the end of the day, all you truly want is to love and be loved. There's a space here that says, literally, I just want to see this really quickly. Spirit was kind of telling me. You know, you're pushing it, Jess. I know. I respect you. Five of Pentacles. Do you see how he put the violin down or she put the violin down? It's actively putting down the things that give you joy and pleasure and doing this obligation, doing this thing, and it's creating emptiness. Five of Pentacles is the card of lack, the card of emptiness, the, ca the card of I need more. Two, two of Swords. There's a blockage. There's a lockup. 
Eight of Wands, reverse, inability to move forward. Eight of Cups, reverse, inability to move forward. King of Pentacles, connected to tangible, connected to sensuality, connected to pleasure, finances. The Hermit card, reversed, pulling that energy back within you. The Tower card, the Two of Pentacles, too much going on. It's a shock to the system. Judgment card, having to see it. What do we have here? Five of Swords, hurting yourself, hurting others. Seven of Wands, stressed out, beat down. I just heard the word incapable. You're feeling like you are un in incapable. Wow, you guys. It's so funny too, the oil that I have sitting here, I swear this is not a shameless self plug, is the fertility oil. Growth, fertility, abundance, attraction, beauty. This is the vibe. Literally, that's the vibe that you need to embody. And when you embody it, don't beat yourself up in the embodiment of it. It's meant to be free. It's meant to be carefree. It's meant to be loving. Some of you guys are overly looking for confirmation, clarity. You're, you're, you're asking. I'm hearing. I'm hearing someone asking for permission. Like, please give me a break. Like, it's like I'm hearing someone sell, say, with this card, Three of Pentacles here. Just tell spirit. Tell my future self. Tell God. Tell the higher power. I need. I need a break. Tell them. Like, can you tell them I need a break? See? Seven of Wands. It's very, very stressed out. Please, like, I'm, I'm hearing it's almost like I need a hug. I need, I need permission. You have to give me something. You have to give me resources. Give me information. How do I do that? Like, that's, that's what's coming through right now. How do I do that? There's so much cards right here that say I'm beat up. I'm stressed out. I'm overburdened. I don't know how. And if this is not you, this is someone that you're dealing with. And what Spirit is saying is let love in. Let it in. It's right here in front of your fingertips, but you keep, you're, you're trying to equate pain and pleasure. All you know is to be brutal, or all they know is to be brutal. All they know is to be aggressive. All they know is to be diminished. They feel diminished. And when the times when they felt, the times when they felt supported, the times when they felt loved, are the times when they were entertaining, the times when they are on, you know, doing these things that are actively hurting themselves. That's the only time when they, I don't know why this is coming through right now, but that's the only time when they get love. That's the only time when they feel supported. That's the only time when they feel seen is when they're on, I just heard flexing, like when they're putting it all out there. But internally, that's not who they are or that's not who you are. I'm also getting this like well of pure water, like pure, I'm hearing like a potion, but it's really, it's like, this is the essence of the core of of this person's being but around it is all this toxicity it's like it's like this like source of of purity and innocence and playfulness and the the essence of their being the very core essence of their soul being dropped in the middle of a of a sludge in the middle of some random ass place and you would never know the, the purity of their intentions the purity of their heart all they know or all you know is this. Wow. So I had to pause the video really quickly because I looked up and I saw that my battery was about to die out. And then I realized that that in itself is a message for this, for this pile. Your future self is, is telling you or your higher self or the divine is telling you that, you know, don't punish yourself in hearing this. If this message is res resonating with you really strongly, this is not more permission from the universe, from the, from the planets, or from spirit to punish yourself because you haven't figured it out faster. Spirit is saying, like, legit, you have the time now to acknowledge it, see it, because there is a reason why you have been on guard. There is a reason why you were stressed out. There's a reason why you were overburdened. There's a reason why you couldn't be transparent. You couldn't be seen because there were people who were going to take advantage of you. Do you remember how the word that came through for you was the word exploitation? Exploitation means to take something that is innocent, that is sweet, and to take advantage of it. And now I'm getting pulled back to that vision of the well, that source of, you know, the well where it's dropped in the middle of this, the slums. 
And the reason why is because if it was seen too soon, it would have been taken advantage of. People don't, people notoriously abuse things that are sacred. And I don't think that people do this because that's their inherent nature I, or that they want to ruin things. I just think that when something is sacred and pure and innocent, it reminds people of that which is within them and they just need to touch it because they're having a hard time touching it within themselves. And in that, too many people touch it and ruin it and it's no longer sacred. And you had the Hermit card reversed. So there's aspects within yourself that are introverted, that are so pulled in. But Spirit is saying that now is the time for you to be more, to be, it's an invitation to be conscious and aware of who, what, where, when, you know, what is in your energy. And if you can't trust sharing your, the essence of your being with them, or if they haven't developed the trust, or if they don't respect, then you want to consider how available you allow them to be with you. I'm not seeing a total uh, abandonment. I'm not seeing a total disruption. I'm seeing patiently unfolding, unveiling, you know, things, giving things time and space to prove themselves to you, not in a way that is punishing, but you are just pulling that energy back within yourself. And you're, you're rediscovering, and this is what spirit or your future self wants you to know, it's for you to begin right now, is to give yourself the fresh sweet waters. That means that you're taking care of your mind, body, soul, spirit, and things that resonate and make sense for you. And that you make them a part of your day-to-day -day routine. And that if it doesn't, if, some, if there's an invitation or if there's someone or something that's trying to get in or that you are available to or wants to be available to you, respectfully, you can decline. And in that garden space that you are creating, I see it, that well that I was talking about earlier, I see it growing, expanding. And I see it becoming more lush. And I want you to acknowledge and to see, especially with this page of wands here, you're just rebuilding your energy. You're rebuilding your life force. You're rebuilding your vitality instead of being defensive, on guard, stressed out, afraid of being used and abused. Um, it takes time. And in that, you want to give grace. You want to be sweet. You want to be sweet and pure like sweet water. And it's okay for you to have boundaries. It's okay for you to say no, respectfully decline, remove yourself from certain circumstances. Why? Because you are protecting your purity. And in that, you're going to re-explore your sense of pleasure. You're gonna re-explore. This is not just physical pleasure. This is mental pleasure. Allowing yourself to relax. Allowing yourself to equate pleasure as a good thing. Or not everything has to be so hard on you. Not everything has to be so beating up on you. Let's see your oracle cards. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is about you understanding. Look, literally, we. she's holding the moon and the sun. I don't know if you guys can see that. She's holding the moon and the sun in her hands. Why? Because that's balance. That's shadow and light. Those are the aspects within yourself and the aspects within other people where it has to be balanced. It's like temperance card. You figure it out as you go along. You try trial and error. So it's not about punishing yourself or punishing other people. I'm also getting the space of pregnancy here that something is being born, but it's being very conscious and aware of what it is that you're saying yes to, but also making sure that you're saying yes to the right things and that you're allowing yourself to say yes. It's not always, no, I have to work, or no, I'm out drinking, or no, blah, 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 or yes to, to whatever. It's about balance and moderation and healthiness. Create space for new love. That's the card that you guys just got. Create space for new love. I want to read this to you. Wow. When a thing hurts your eyes, stop looking at it. When it hurts your ears, stop listening to it. And when it hurts your heart, stop justifying it. I love you so much, the universe. 
Do you see how the universe is saying, create more space for love, pleasure, beauty, abundance, fragility, compassion, vulnerability, tenderness, innocence, playfulness to re-enter into your life. Let's see, reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Deception. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship and worth waiting for. So this is showing me that there are aspects within yourself that your future self and spirit is telling you that you are, you are removing this mask, this facade of, again, it's, it keeps bringing me back to pain is pleasure or pleasure is pain, pleasure, pleasure is pain. So there's aspects within yourself that you are revisiting, that you're returning to. Give, and at the same time as I'm saying this, give yourself and others the space to come back to themselves because I'm getting a sense that there's a, a few people who are wearing a mask here. And it's not that they're actively trying to deceive, they just don't know any better or they're self-protecting. And this card worth waiting for, you need to know that if you give yourself the time and the space, to come back to yourself, to explore innocence, to literally reconciliation, that means coming back. So there might be someone coming back into your life, but do you see how pure they are? Both, and I see um, someone else because the two, the two angels here. There's this element of two, two. You're being watched by loving eyes. This feels like a blessing and a curse. Some of you guys are so used to being watched because you're gonna be exploited, you're gonna be taken advantage of, or you're gonna be entertaining. And it's just a violation to your spirit. It's a violation to who you are internally. And spirit is guiding you away from that. Change is always good. Actually, the only effective way of changing another person is by changing yourself. Works every time, guaranteed. Though, I'm kind of partial to the way you are right now. Tally-ho, the universe. This means that, again, you're drawing all of the energy back within you. You're drawing all of the energy internally. And as you do that, there's a shift that happens. There's a shift that occurs. When you step into the essence, the core being of yourself, when you allow yourself to have pleasure that is right for you, a life that you love, love that is good for you, you won't allow yourself to accept anything less than, so everything in your environment meets, will match it, will match that vibration. And you yourself will not allow anything that, that will come in that will take advantage of you. You're coming back into yourself. Create space for new love. That's what your future self is telling you right now, is to really change it up. Change up how you move. And I'm like, I don't know why, but I'm just getting this strong sense, well, it makes sense too with worth waiting for, but I'm getting this really strong sense of patience. Be patient with yourself. Be understanding. Don't beat up yourself or another person while they are coming back to themselves, while they are coming back to you. Things are about to get really juicy. Do you see how everything's like, okay, 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 it's coming. Just don't poop out. The answer is yes, anyways. So whatever it is that you're thinking on your heart, the answer is yes. Things are about to get really juicy. Things are popping off, and that's literally what it is that I said with this card, or this flower. This flower is really about the juice of life, the abundance of life. It reminds me of my Nectar of Life candle, which is inviting in juicy, loving, vibrant, like, I don't want to say thrilling, but nourishing energy in your life, in all areas of your life. That's my favorite fixed candle to work with lately. Okay, Fatima, the mother of, Im what is this, imams? Imams? Love is my lineage and gratitude is my, my religion. That's something that you can, that can help you right now, is giving the space for gratitude for the universe for protecting you for the path, the journey that has protected you, for the times where you were hidden, for the times where you have escaped, for the times where you, you know, the time where you're at right now where you can come back to yourself. Everything, this card of gratitude is coming through that says, give gratitude for the journey. Don't punish yourself within that. You're a spiritual teacher. Share your wisdom with others. You were born to teach. This is showing me, those that pick this pile, what is asked of them is so, much more than is asked of other people. Like there's people who go through some real serious things and they act out, they react. And you're almost not given the same grace, the same um, permission, I guess. It's like if someone else was to act out after going through what you've gone through, I just looked at the clock 11, 11, but if someone was to act out and do what, 
you know, because of everything that they've gone through, they would get away with it, they would get a pass, and you would get the punishment. And you've almost expected that, and Spirit really wants to acknowledge that for you, but also says that moving forward, create space for the newness. Create space, and while you're creating that space, continue to honor and to embrace and to embody the idea of what pleasure looks like. Pay oh my goodness, I'm done. <laughs> I couldn't make it up. Patience. Was that not what I was saying? I just kept getting this space of patience. Being patient. Oh my goodness, I can't. The word that's coming through with this is be patient, like really, like gentleness. Be gentle. First step. I don't know why this just softens me down so much. You wouldn't like beat up a baby or get mad at a baby or a puppy because it can't walk up the steps. Have you ever seen puppies trying to get upstairs and they kind of like slip and fall and dun 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 dun? But they they almost puppies almost like laugh at it. You know they they over time they might get nervous and scared and not trust the steps or have it build a fear against it. All those things are understandable because of what they've gone through. It's like relearning how to take that first step and being patient with yourself in the process. I really am getting a sense of gentleness here. Golden Palace, my loves. This card is so powerful because it reminds, it's a reminder that the divine, the universe, your angels, your guides are always protecting you and always wanting to love you and always wanting to guide you and always wanting to make sure that you're good. And what's for you will not be taken from you. In fact, everything will come through in order to guide you to that, but not all has been revealed yet. This moon is still growing in size. Not all will, not all is revealed yet, yet. Be patient. It's not the end of the journey. It's not the end of the road. There's more beauty and blessings to come, but surrender to it. And I don't know why, but I'm also getting called to the lavender. You might, I don't know what the lavender pile is yet. You guys are obviously the first ones, but I almost feel like there's a space of working with the energy. Yeah, one ring circus. You've really been put in an um, misfortunate position. Like it's like you had to really call the shots, protect yourself. This is the child that had to be was never allowed to be a child. They had to parent the parent or in their relationships, they were always kind of, they were like, there was like an emptiness or cheatation or some type of violation that happened or whatever. But it brings all the energy around you and it's an unfair, it's unfair. And everyone says, well, you're strong, you're capable. Six, three, four, five. So I'm just seeing this natural progression here. Through your challenges, through your change, you know, as things are changing, well, change is good, oh wow, that's true. Change is always good. As things are changing, things are progressing. But while things are changing, you want it to progress in a way that is forward for, for, for you, that is good for you. I can't wait to see, okay. Wow, okay, seven of swords. You guys are so used to being taken advantage of. You're so used to being stolen from. You're so used to being caught off guard. You're so used to, but now I'm seeing you setting the intention that, you know, for purity, for, for peace, for softness, for kindness. I'm also hearing some of you guys are learning it from another person or you're teaching it with another per you're teaching it to another person. You might be dealing with someone who's very on guard. And as you're doing that, you know, your intention will showcase itself but your intention is almost like the strength card. I teach this in the Sacred Circle Tarot School. The magic of the strength card, the beauty of the strength card and how to work with it. We just talked about this the other day. So we have Page of page of Swords. So again, this card, these cards are, they know how to punish, they want to punish, they know what punishment looks like. And King of Wands here, the King of Rods reversed, is very over the top has to put on a show, has to put on this big old defense, the loudest one in the room. And Spirit is saying, be patient while they or you learn to put the guard down and learn to disrobe themselves. Of course, it's going to take some time, but it is truly, it'll be worth waiting for. And I'm definitely getting this sense of prayer here. Um, if this is not working with another person, this is working with your guides. 
um, working with yourself as you're disrobing and spirit is saying for you, the message for your future self to summarize it is to be patient with yourself as you are building and budding into coming back to the sense of pleasure, joy, vulnerability, transparency. Be kind and compassionate with yourself and loving with yourself. And those boundaries that is that you set for yourself, they don't have to be ruthless. They don't have to be cut cold. If someone brings to you energy that is cold or sharp, you don't have to engage in it and interact in it. And over time, it will pay off. So I hope that this message resonates, my loves. This is what I'm seeing for the hibiscus. For those of you guys that ask, what is it I recommend with this? Obviously for you, the fertility oil um, and the nectar of life oil just to help you move into the space or sacral chakra, root chakra, heart chakra healing. Those meditations can be found anywhere on YouTube, okay? I'm sending you guys all of my love, believe me, and I hope that you're well. Make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next one. Hello again, my loves. So if you chose the orchid, this is your reading. Now, I don't know if I said this in the introduction, but every one of the flowers that we're working with today are from my personal garden. I think I did say that. And this orchid is from this. It was actually, um, this orchid's been blooming for a minute. I don't know if you can see, it's starting to, you know, hit its time. So its blooms were at max capacity of what it would give, and now it's at the very end of that journey. So I don't know if that's a message that someone needs to hear, but this is what you chose. Also, these oracle cards, I have not seen them yet, but they are here to support the messages that I pull from the Tarot of Sexual Magic. Now, the reason why I'm choosing to work with the Tarot of Sexual Magic is I feel because Spirit wants to showcase um, your connection with it. And your higher self wants to showcase your, your connection with it. Even though these cards are very sexual in nature, they're really showing an intimate human representation of where you guys are at right now. And I feel like this card is, this, this tarot deck is the best. Now I do have tarot cards in here that we'll be pulling and seeing later, but for the most part, I'll be shuffling and pulling from these guys. However, if you are easily offended, this is probably not your, this is not your video. This is not your message. Or maybe it is, but you're, you being offended is, All right, wow, so just like number one, there's a few messages that are coming through. This isn't as strong. This feels very, I don't know why the word that just came through is flipsy. <laughs> I don't even know that's really a word, but that's what Spirit just said, very flipsy. Um, what stands out to me right now with this card, I don't know if you guys can see this, is the Sage Bundle. I never really noticed it until today. The hanged man is about, one word that you, you could use to describe it is um, surrender. But for you guys, I'm seeing a pause. I'm seeing, I'm hearing the words mo momentary pause, um, hiatus. I'm, I'm hearing the words respite, respite, and I'm getting the vibes of really being kind of like stuck in this space of limbo right now. I, I just heard the word uncharted territory. So for you, okay, and I'm, I'm getting, I'm smelling in the back of my, like, like, I don't know how to describe it to you, but when I get visions and stuff like that, um, it's a part of my senses, but it's like beyond them. And I'm, I'm smelling rose. It's very distinct rose rose flowers uh, i don't know what that means yet it's tying me to the high priestess it's the rose for you normally it symbolized well roses in general normally symbolize love but for you it's power the power of attraction the power of beauty i'm also feeling a vibe of 
honoring all sides of you and for some reason there's a connection to independence and the independence I'm getting as I think about the thorn but it's the rose it's your ability to put yourself first and foremost I'm seeing how it makes things surrender to you it makes things fall to you fall to your feet it, with the high priestess here she really is a reminder of coming back to ourselves to our power our power of intention but also bringing that to the divine and seeing if it aligns am i on the right path this is what i'm feeling this is the conversation that i'm getting right now this is what i'm getting spirit this is what i envisioned for myself is this in alignment with what you see and have for me and if not send me visions so that i can see it this is avoiding chaos of the mind it's avoiding corruption of the mind and corruption of the plan is what it is i'm getting there's this word corruption i think this is because i don't want to say that you're avoiding disaster um but you're avoiding wasting time you're avoiding idling you don't want to idle or you don't want something that you're working on idling just do 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 just running wasting gas if that's not what you're thinking and feeling, it's what spirit or your future self is telling you right now. We don't want you idling. We want you to use your time constructively. And this is a direct correlation and connection to um, your laws of attraction, beauty, your power. And your power comes from, I don't know why, I just keep getting this strong visual of red roses. So I don't know if you need to bring red roses to your altar or you need to have red roses in your environment. It's not, I was gonna say perfume, um, but, cause that's the word that came through, but it's not artificial, it's pure. It's, again, I feel like I'm like shamelessly self-plugging lately, but it's like, Bahati Life oils, you know, like I don't use artificial fragrances. I use plant essence because the essence of the plant, the essence of the flower is powerful. And that's what, they, and there's no comparison to it. It's very distinct. Not only can you smell it, it's a vibe. It's an energy. It's life. And that's what it is I'm seeing here is and it's so interesting because the Nine of Swords is here, and this can show up for people who are really plagued in, they've almost plunged themselves in the icy coldness of their shadow self or their worst case, their worst fears. But for you, I almost feel like you're avoiding that. Or spirit is giving you the tools right now to avoid it, to cleanse your energy, to purify your energy. King of Cups. The Ace of Pentacles. I keep getting, especially with this card now, with Ace of Pentacles, it's bringing me back to the Rose. So I don't know why, but Taurus energy is coming through. Very, very Taurus. As I'm looking at this, they have roses, red roses, at their feet. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if it'll focus. It's okay if it doesn't. They have red roses at their feet. But it's very sensual. It's very present. I don't know why the word just came through transcendentalism. That's a very specific message. So hold on a second. Sometimes what I when a word comes through. Oh man. Wow, yes. An idealistic philo philosophical, philosophical and social movement which developed in New England around 1836 in reaction to rationalism, influenced by Romanticism, Platonism, I don't know what that is, Cantanian, Cantanian philosophy. It is taught that divinity pervades all nature and humanity, and its members held progressive views on feminism Feminism and communal li living, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau were central figures. 
yeah, transcendentalists, transcendentalisms advocated the idea of personal knowledge of a, a, a personal knowledge of God, believing that no intermediary intermediary so no one in between was needed for spiritual insight they embraced idealism focus focusing on nature and opposing materialism these that's the word that came through for you it's very transcendentalism it's very back to the root back to purity back to simplicity back to connecting with god back to the beauty of those things it's very earthy it's very sensual and something about connecting into that i'm hearing limber I don't know why the word is limber, but coming back into that is going to be very, very powerful you for, for you. I'm seeing intention. I'm seeing magic. I'm seeing root simplicity being very powerful. That's also what I work with when I'm working my intention and working spells or rituals. It's very simple, but very high quality ingredients pure as pure as possible and as fresh as possible everything done with intention everything done from hand and that gives it and the the, the simplicity of it all makes the mind more powerful it makes the mind more focused it makes it more potent and that's what it is i'm getting for you guys so it's very much like a love spell but it doesn't necessarily need to be a love spell it could be a love spell for yourself it could be um, something that you were trying to, okay, wow, helpful people. This is interesting because I'm hearing the word support. There needs to be, especially with the hangman here and the three of cups, you want to feel supported. You want to feel encouraged. You want to feel like people are contributing to your lives and that you are contributing in a way that is helpful and meaningful and impactful. Romance, that makes a lot of sense. So spirit, what spirit is saying is like, I don't, with your future self is asking you to connect with or to attract or to set the intention for there to be helpful energy that comes in. People who are lifting you up, supporting you, or that you are helping and supporting yourself. I'm also seeing you're not meant to be doing everything on your own. You're meant to ask for help. I see spirit almost saying, you know, with, you know, your angels and guides, you might be needing to ask them for more support, including them, incorporating them. That was one of the first original messages that came through. I'm also remembering Henry David Thoreau. Um, I think that was him or Emerson when he went out to the cabin in the woods and he was, it wasn't that far away from society, but he took the time that is that he needed to get back to himself, get back to the source and find the answers within him. So I'm seeing that, you know, that's what, what your angels are guiding you right now to ask for, to work with. Wow, let go of control issues, children, give your relationship a chance, and it is safe for you to love, and these cards come, oh, actually, now I remember this, the, this pile had the most cards, perfect timing and not the right time, I love that contradiction right there, we'll talk about that in a minute, but some of you guys, you are learning how to attract and not force. You're learning how to ask for what it is that you need and not doing it all on your own. Your, 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 so the other thing too with children, you can't really control children. You can guide them, but you can't, if they're, and you can't change a child, they are who they are. So there's aspects within your situation, your circumstances that if you let go of your reins, especially with the hanged man here, if you let go and with the high priestess, she sets intention, but she doesn't control the outcome. In fact, the high priestess is one of my cards. And I teach this from the sacred circle tarot school. This card is connected to the idea of being very humble and being and surrendering to the divine and connecting to the divine. You have your intention, you have your will, but like I said in the beginning of this reading, does it match what spirit wants and has in store for you? If there are certain things that you are trying to help move along or things that you want to see happen and occur, it's, it's saying that go to spirit. It is in the divine's will that is outside of your control, that is not for you to worry about, but for you to connect with, for you to tap into, to understand when it is the right time. If now is not the right time, that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that when it is the perfect timing, that is when it will occur. But for right now, you need to get your hands off of it. Stop trying to move it along. If anything, 
if you're gonna do any type of work, let it be through attraction. So you being the embodiment of beauty, glamour, or sensuality, or whatever feels good for you, it almost reminds me of pile number one, you being very empress-like in your energy and attracting to you, um, talking about embodying and being an example, a walking, living, breathing example of what it is that you want to manifest in your life. And that will help you, that will help it to manifest, that will help it to materialize, but not you putting your hands on it. So much of this, of these cards, are not about you pushing and forcing something. Literally, even with the hanged man card, it's about surrendering. Your word that came through was transcendentalism. That's about really going back to God, going back to simplicity, going back to the bare bones, and finding yourself within that. Um, yeah, wow. So that's what's really coming through. It's saying that whatever it is that you are working towards right now or that you see yourself in the future, the urgent message is let go of control. Surrender it. It's not the right time right now, but perfect timing is in order. And you want to set intention. There's this really strong message of setting intention, working your magic now, working with roses, studying the rose, understanding the rose, where it gets its ma magic from, why it's considered so magical, why it's considered connected to beauty and glamour and, um, you know, like abundance in life and embodying that now. See me in their eyes. So whenever conferring with another, either face to face or across the miles, whether a human being, a departed spirit or a sentient tree, always speak to the high, the highest within them. It makes such a difference. Amen, the universe. So, okay, turn on your love light. Do you see karma is on your side? This is all about attraction. This is about it. whatever it is that you're wanting, it may not necessarily be here right now. If it's a commitment, it hasn't been committed to yet. That's not to say that it can't happen, it's not gonna happen, it's just saying that set intention for it to happen and move as if it's already there and only accept what it is that you want and it will materialize. It's not that it's, it, and you can't control it. The more that you control it, the more that it, it eludes you. In fact, almost you pulling away and disconnecting and just focusing on your sensuality, focusing on your beauty, focusing on your attraction is what attracts it to you. What else do we have here? Wow, okay, Freya, the goddess of discernment. I spend my time wisely. I only say yes when it's a holy hell yes. So this is really about, again, discernment like well the, the high priestess is so connected to to the idea of discernment and being humble and humble meaning that you connect with spirit and when if it's a yes and when and that's the other thing too you want other people you want this other thing to respond to you with a strong hell yes to you and you're saying a strong hell yes to it if anything else it's like it's faltering it's, it's wonky, it's wobbly, and you want a firm foundation, don't you? So you are avoiding mental anguish, mental anxiety, pain, suffering, by setting the intention now and lifting the bar a bit higher and walking, breathing, moving as if it's here. That's going to help you to attract, get more into your life. What else do we have here? Wow, raise your vibration. Do you see the Palmaria? is known for its ability to give off a perfume. That's what, as I said earlier, you guys. This, this flower will attract far and wide. A bee or a bug will find the palmaria, palmaria, um, palmaria because it will smell it. When I was in Hawaii, I mean, these, these, these flowers were so strong. You could smell them so far away. And you would literally look for it. So by raising your vibration, you literally set off a perfume. You literally set off an aroma that will pull towards you the very things that is that you want. Just like children, you can't contain them. You can, there might be a, an emotional immaturity here that we're working with. So you can't control them. You can't confine them. You can't contain them. You can attract them to you by doing things that you, you know, that feel good for you, but that you know they can't resist. It's almost like a little bit of manipulation, almost. 
It's like trying to get children to eat their vegetables. You know that they need to eat their vegetables, but you have to find creative ways to get them to do it, if that makes any sense. Let your inner beauty shine. So again, this is in the rose, you guys. There's the rose. So, and the interesting thing too about this is that it's the pink rose. Pink is a combination of white and red. Red is passion, desire, beauty, attraction. And white is purity and innocence. So when we merge the both best of both worlds, we have really good intention with attraction and beauty and things just naturally come to us. Follow the leader. Do you see this? You're, you're the leader in this. You wanna be the leader in this. But at the same time, you don't wanna force. A good leader doesn't make people feel like they're being led. It makes them feel like they are actively participating. So embody that. Don't force them and say, this is what I want. This is what's going on. This is whatever it is. It's very, especially with the Ace of Pentacles, it's investing. It's giving a little and it building up into a lot over time. Solitude. So just like transcendentalism, it's about you going into the, your path in the woods. Finding that time for yourself. Coming back to yourself. What are your tarot cards do you have here? We have the death cards. So you're really in the midst of some major change. We have the knight of coins reversed. So some of you guys are really wanting this change to occur really rapidly, really fast. And spirit is saying that it's going to be put in, invested in over time. And yes, knight of knight of wands. So again, this is very impatient energy. Very impatient energy. I'm not surprised to see this. So your future self is telling you right now that you want to take it baby steps, baby steps. You want to focus on attraction. You want to speak to spirit while you're in your quiet time and your alone time, your sacred time, and make sure that the path, the plan matches what spirit has for you. And it will literally manifest. You are supported. You want support and you want both parties or two separate things. If that's what you're setting intention for to be on the same wavelength and saying a resounding yes. Set intention for it now. Your future self will thank you. I hope this message makes sense. If it resonates, let me know down in the comments. Make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. All right, my loves. This message is for those that chose the lavender. As I said in the intro, these plants these flowers are actually from my personal garden you guys and they are thriving and it's the lavender that i am the most proud of because i to be honest with you i normally kill it i don't know why i have such a hard time with lavender but the bush that i have two big bushes <laughs> lavender bushes and <laughs> and they are just thriving lately and these two babies were the ones that were at the very bottom of the bushel and they weren't getting as much sun but they're still just they're still very strong but i felt that they would be they smell really good too i felt that they would be better you know as um as a gift for you and then of course i'm going to hang them upside down and dry them and use them in an oil. Anyways, this is your message. These are your oracle cards. I have not seen them, but I will share with them, share them with you in a minute. Like I said to the other piles before, this um, I'm really feeling gravitating. I feel really feel like I'm gravitating towards the tarot of sexual magic. It is an 18. <coughs> it is an 18 and over deck. Um, so if you are easily offended, then it is what it is. I'm sorry. But for the most part, the reason why I feel like I'm gravitating towards this pile to these cards are, is because these cards are very physical in nature. Obviously it's tarot, sexual magic. So they're very sexual images, but they show their perfect representation of physical intimacy, human intimacy. They're very human in nature. And I feel like this is going to help us to see your connection with spirit in more physical terms in ways that is more hands-on and also with your higher self. And like the topic of the title of this video, we are talking about urgent messages from your future self was that you need to hear right now before the future manifests itself. So, I don't know why. Let me just go ahead and dive in. Some of these, this card is a bit more quiet and this is the energy that I'm picking up on. And then there's something that feels hidden. It feels, 
uh, I don't know why I'm hearing the word suppress. Wow. Okay. So if you are coming from pile number one, because I did, when I was reading for pile number one, those that chose the hibiscus, these are some cards that actually came through for you guys. So this might be an extension to that, that if you would like to, or you feel called to listen to this pile number one, then by all means. It's so funny because number one came in with a big bell. This is very quiet. I'm hearing the word suppression. It feels like there's something that's hidden or dormant that's waiting to emerge. It's almost reminding me of like an outbreak or something. Yeah, something's coming up. Something's definitely coming up. Uh, it does feel a little bit like a warning. I'm going to be clear with you guys. It does feel like something is impending. Impending. It does feel like a warning. It does feel at a little out of control, especially with a chariot card here reversed. It feels like, I just heard the word, am I ready? I don't know if I'm ready. Uh, King of Swords, and now I'm drawn to this. I'm feeling this message really strong now. King of Swords says, don't come to me with energy if you're not ready. Don't come to me with no purpose. Don't come to me with the answers that, you know, answers to questions that I need, I need, I really need answers. I can't, I can't do this wavering stuff. Come to me prepared. Come to me ready. Eight of Wands wants to move fast, wants to move forward. Spirit is really clearly telling me that, you know, you want to get it all in order now. Or there, I'm hearing there's this rustling. There's this, it's behind the scenes. It's like something occurred or is occurring or will occur um, on the horizon that is coming up that someone or something or you know that's building up and you are quickly, how do I get my ducks in a line? What do I need to get in order in order to get it done? And it's very, it's very fast. And there's, it feels like if you're not ready, if you're not prepared, there's punishment to it, which is funny because number one was talking about the energy of of that and I'm not gonna revisit it because that message was powerful all by itself that one shook me to my core but the base of your reading is ten of wands and this is the burdens that we take on that we feel called to take on but sometimes there's this question of can I do it am I ready like I want to be able to do it but am I ready for it can I can I take it there and the, with the higher font here it's collaborate. Chirophant and the Three of Pentacles is about collaboration. It's about getting ducks in a line, getting things in order, resolving issues from the past, re resolving blockages from the past. If it's going to be, yo, I have never seen this until just now. Do you guys see that frog? The frog to me is, has always been about transformation, but it's about things that need to evolve, man. They need to be dealt with. Sometimes we hear frogs croaking and we never see them, but they're giving out a warning. The frog for me is always about the warning. So there's this call right now that's being put out that says deal with the frog. Deal, I never saw the frog until today. But yet you're, you're trying to do it all. You're trying to get it all in order. You're trying to, and there's this, um, I don't want to say, oh my God, it's very bringing me to number one. So I think if you're, if you're called to this, watch number one too, if you feel called to it, but it's very like deceptive, which it's like, you know, something or someone getting everything that it can, doing everything in its power in order to get ready, to get prepared, to be on guard, to be re like on it. But you want to start preparing for it now. You want to start, if this is um house planning get your credit right if this is a relationship marriage clear out your closet so that your partner has space for their stuff if this is you're ready to start dating start getting rid of the people that are 
annoyances, distractions, or that would impede a significant stable relationship. If you're in a relationship and you're ready to go into single singleness, start tying up the, the loose ends of that relationship so that you can split and be free. If this is career, get your stuff in order. If this is business, get a business plan. There's all of these things that are saying, spirit is saying, your future self is telling you right now, get it, get it going. What do you have here? I just want to remain positive. Okay. Wow. Meanwhile, we have, you don't need to worry. Some of you guys are really worried about this baggage. You're worried about the future. You're worried about what's to come. You're worried about success. What happens when it break, when there's, when it breaks out, what happens when this happens for me? And the thing is, you have to know what you want. The chariot card is not just about movement. It's about intention, willpower, and the strength to can maintain order so that things can progress and move forward. That's all about getting your mind right. Some of you guys feel very judgmental of yourself or feel very harsh energy towards yourself. That's like, oh, I'm not ready until. And it's like, you know what? There are so many different aspects of yourself that you need to have, that you need to be, that you need to experience in order to be successful in this area. So learn how to work with all of those aspects within yourselves. You're not just one definable thing. You're all of these different things that help make you so distinct, make you so unique. And that's what's going to contribute to your success. What else do we have here? Heart to heart conversations. Pay attention to the red flags. Legit. That's that frog. There is a croak of warning that's saying there are some red flags that we want you to see or that spirit is calling you to see right now before things go too far, before things move too far along. And you need to have those heart-to-heart -heart conversations. And also, I'm seeing this conversation within yourself. You have to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with yourself. It's not about worrying about it or changing it. If anything, all these cards are talking about changes felt within. But this says, honestly discuss your feelings with each other. That means honestly discuss the feelings with yourself. How are you truly feeling? What do you really want? What is actually bothering you? What are you allowing to stop you from being successful? Deal with all of those things now. Because again, there's so much in the future. Wow, okay, I heart you. There's this energy, I don't know if someone said I love you or if someone's waiting for I love you or if there's an energy of something that is that you love, something that is, that is that you're choosing. It's like you might not hear it right now, it's heart to heart conversations, it's coming. You might not hear it right now, but there's a warning, there's a call that says, listen, before we go any further, what do we need to address, heal, take care of now, especially with the Hierophant. He doesn't tell us what we need to do. He gives guidance to help you to find that way for yourself. But he can't tell us. And he'll give us the, the ways of the world before, that have been before, to help you to make a good decision for yourself. I don't know why I'm hearing rationalizing. It'll help it to put it into perspective. Get it out of your head and you know onto paper. That you have options is meaningful rock on. So this to me is showing that there are certain things that need to be dealt with, that need to be sorted through, that need to be chosen, that need to be prioritized, that need to be discarded in order for you to be successful. Some of you guys are needing to figure out, okay, you know, realistically, you can't have it all. And I say that as a person who believes that you can manifest anything, but some of you guys are manifesting uh, contrasting things. So I used to have a client, long-term client, we'll still have them, but I actually have a reading with them coming up. I don't know why I said used to, but um, she would say, I wanna have this home here, a, you know, a bed and breakfast and blah, 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 blah. Like all this vision, all this stuff is here present. At the same token, in the same breath, she would be like, I'm gonna travel the world. I don't wanna have any restrictions. I don't wanna be con confined or contained to anything. I wanna be able to explore and have my freedom. Um, the wind is calling me, I must go. And it's like these, yes, you can have, but choose. If you are, if you wanna be home, here, present, you can't also be traveling. You can't be at home in, in China at the same time. 
unless your home is in China, but if that's the case, you still have this itch to go out and explore. So what is it? So get those, have that heart to heart conversation with yourself. Listen to others, be transparent with others, pay attention to what others are saying and what they're not saying. Don't try to spend too much time decoding it. You don't need to worry about that. In fact, it's literally saying, you might not know exactly what it is that they're saying. You might not know exactly where it is that they stand or where you stand or whatever, but you will. So keep the mind right, keep the thoughts high, keep the vibration high and watch what unfolds. What else do you have? We have, oh goodness. Segment, the red lady. I am pure strength. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. There are certain disappointments and certain things that are bothering you, but also I'm seeing that some of you guys are pulling your power from a place just is so pure, man. It's so pure and so powerful, and you're learning how to channel that life force energy. Something is truly getting being born here with the Ankh. This is a symbol of masculine and feminine energy. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a symbol of masculine and feminine energy coming together in order for something to be born and to be created. You might not see it being created right now. You might not see it being born, but the intention is there. It is manifesting, it is materializing. Get your ducks in order now to help that to come into fruition. What do we have? Whoa, release all anger and I honor my anger by giving voice to it. There's there's definitely this message here of I need to state my opinion, I need to state my affairs, I need to be honest, I need to be vocal. I got especially remember how I said that someone's saying I heart you, they're either waiting for an I love you or you gotta say it. There's something that needs to be said. They may not know what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Whoa, that was so weird. My camera has never done that before. Like that. That was really weird. I'm going to have to check out what just happened. That was real, that was crazy. But like I'm saying, there's a little warning with this frog here calling out. He's got to call out. He's got to, and it might be ugly. It might not be the prettiest thing. It might rub someone the wrong way, but it's got to be said. It's got to be dealt with. Balanced friendships. Your friendships work best when there's an equal share of giving and receiving. So this could really be about something's been really off here, especially with the three of pentacles. We want to make sure that everyone's on the same wavelength or everything is on the same wavelength and things are in order. Uplift your thoughts. So there's a strong, wow, oh my God, you guys, you chose lavender and look at how perfect. Let go of anxiety. You don't need to worry. Some of you guys are maybe paying too much attention to these red flags and getting upset about it, but it's like, speak on it, man. Oh, these are gonna be powerful, ghost lands. So this is issues of the past and these are worries of the future that are blogging you down in the present. And that's creating a blockage. So spirit is really saying, get these energies in order, deal with them so that they're not this plaguing ghost-like energy that keeps coming through and impeding. Listen, so there is something that needs to be said here. There's something that needs to be spoken. There's something that needs to be shared. There's something that needs to be heard. Listen to what is being said. Listen to what's not being said and also speak your own truth. Wizard of Awareness, and he's really big on listening. He's really big on hearing, and he's very intentional with his words. And he remembers how everything is all connected. He's a reminder that everything is connected. Somehow this is bringing me to the Hierophant. This is about con consulting. It's about creating a space of security, a safe space of security that, you know, you can express these things. So it could be, this could be therapy, this could be getting it out onto paper, it could be journaling, it could be healing work that it needs to be getting done, but Spirit is saying, get all of it. Deal with that and so you guys know what this frog is. You guys know what it is because you've been listening to it at night. It's gonna help you to get your mind right. Wow, Queen of, Queen of Wands. This, I, I think I spoke about independence earlier. Page of Cups. Six of coins, seven of coins. 
So six of pentacles and seven of pentacles. So there needs to truly be an equal balance here, equal giving, but also there's a step back so that you can decode, so that you can figure out, okay, where am I going? What do I want? Where are we headed? What can you give? What do you want to give? This is what I want to give. This is what I won't do. This is what I won't compromise on. And with that, it helps to create more movement and momentum. Queen of Wands knows that she has desires and wishes and a purpose and a life all of her own that is just as equally as important as anyone else's. So she won't put her wishes, her hopes, her desires on the back burner. In fact, she says, okay, I'm calling everything in order. I'm calling the shots in order to make things happen for myself, for the people that is I love, for my friends. And I'm seeing the energy that there is more unfolding. There is more coming in, especially with the Page of Cups. There's an offer on the table. There's new love. There's new ideas. There's new um, space of, of uh, fruitfulness that you're tapping into. But deal with it. Deal with what is present now, calling your attention that is bothering you and plaguing you. Lay it to rest. Put it in its place. Don't worry about it. Don't spend so much time worrying about it. But address it. Resolve it. I feel like this pile, I, I don't normally like to do this, but you guys need one more card. Okay. <laughs> Queen of Wands, once again, Queen of Wands. This is, this person, you you have a life of your own, you have visions of your own, you have a dream of your own, you have a purpose of your own, you have things that you need to be asking for. Two of Wands, what do you want? Where are we going? Where is this headed? Where do I wanna put my energy? Four of Cups, you're not happy, you're not fully happy. Wheel of, Wheel of Fortune, reverse, we're trying to move forward. Eight of Cups, reverse, we're trying to move on. But there's certain aspects that keep hanging you up. There's certain things that are lingering. There's pain that is showing up as anger that needs to be dealt with, that needs to be resolved. Nine of Cups, Six of Swords. Six of Swords wants to lay it to rest and to move forward into a space of peace. Nine of Cups says what you wish is right on the horizon, but I'm just seeing that the anxiety and the, these red flags are really what's burdening you. Okay, so to summarize this, what your future self wants you to know um, and what your higher self wants you to know that's urgent is that there's something that is really calling and croaking out to you definitely at night that is bothering you. You don't want to spend so much time worrying about it and accepting it. You want to call a spade a spade and address it. And if it's not something that you know, you could see yourself working with, then you have to question again, what position and place does it resolve have in your life? There's something that is building, there's something that is impending, that's coming up, but right now, you want to deal with and address all the red flags, all the things that are creating disorder, dysfunction, and chaos for you now presently before you take the next step. I hope this message resonates. I hope it makes sense. Let me know down in the comments if it does or doesn't. And I and also, I want to invite you to make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.